Phenomenology is a philosophical concept that studies the structure of experience and consciousness. As I'll discuss later in this video, it's playing an important role in the development of artificial intelligence systems today. The concept of phenomenology was founded by Edmund Husserl in the early 20th century. It has since been developed by a number of other philosophers, including Martin Heidegger and Jean-Paul Sartre. Phenomenology is often contrasted with other philosophical approaches, such as empiricism and rationalism. They focus on the external world or on the mind respectively. Phenomenology, on the other hand, focuses on the lived experience of the individual. It seeks to describe the essential structures of consciousness. Phenomenology is rooted upon the idea that the only way to understand the world is to study it as we experience it. This means suspending our preconceived notions and biases so that they do not cloud our judgment. Instead, to experience the world as it really is, we need to focus on our experiences with things and events as they are experienced. This allows us to experience the world in a new way. This is sometimes called epochy, or bracketing. Another of the key concepts in phenomenology is the notion of intentionally. Intentionally means that our experiences are always directed towards something. For example, when we see a flower our experience is not of a disembodied sensation of color and shape, but of the flower that we are seeing. Husserl argued that intentionally is the defining characteristic of consciousness. He said that consciousness is always conscious of something and that this something is always an object. Objects can be physical objects or they can be mental objects. But regardless of the type of object, it is always the object of our consciousness. Another important idea in phenomenology is known as horizon. The horizon encompasses the background of our experience. This provides the context for our understanding of the things that we are aware of. For example, when we see a flower, we not only see the flower itself, but also the ground beneath it, the sky above it, and the surrounding landscape. The horizon of possibilities is always changing, depending on our context and our interests. For example, if we are hiking in the woods, the horizon of possibilities for a tree might include climbing it, sitting under it, or using it for firewood. But if we are a botanist, the horizon of possibilities might include identifying the species of tree, studying its leaves, or observing its behavior. The concept of horizon helps us to understand the way that our experience is always situated in a wider context. It also helps us to understand the way that our experience is always open-ended and unfinished. Husserl used the terms noema and noesis to define the aspects of experience. The noesis is the act of consciousness while the noema is the content of the act. Our experiences are always directed towards something and acting upon this object. The noema is often described as the intentional object of an experience. This means that the noema is the object as it is intended in our consciousness. For example, when we see a flower, the noema of the experience is not the physical flower itself, but the flower as it appears to us in our consciousness. The noema includes the flower's size, shape, color, and other properties as they are experienced by us. The noesis is used to describe the intentional act of an experience. This means that the noesis is the act of intending something in our consciousness. For example, when we see a flower, the noesis of the experience is not the physical flower itself, but the act of seeing the flower. The noesis includes our attention, our awareness, and our understanding of the flower. The noesis is also said to have a core and a fringe. The core of the noesis is the most essential part of the act. This is what gives the object its meaning. The fringe of the noesis is the less essential part of the act. It includes things like our emotions, our memories, and our prejudices. Phenomenology has been applied to a wide range of fields, including philosophy, psychology, sociology, and anthropology. It is also being used in the development of artificial intelligence systems. In John Carpenter's 1974 cult classic film, Dark Star, the conclusion features one of the characters trying to teach an AI planet buster bomb phenomenology to stop it from detonating. Look up the clip on YouTube, it's a fascinating philosophical discussion. But, how does phenomenology fit into real-world AI research? 
one way that phenomenology is used in AI is to develop models of human perception. Phenomenological researchers have argued that perception is not simply a matter of receiving information from the world through our senses. It is also a matter of actively constructing our experience of the world. This is because our experiences are always shaped by our expectations, our memories, and our emotions. AI systems need to borrow this perception to some degree to be able to correctly process prompts. Because of this need, AI researchers have used phenomenological insights to develop new models of perception that take into account the active role of the perceiver. These models have been used to improve the performance and training of AI systems in tasks such as image recognition and natural language processing. Another way that phenomenology is used in AI is to develop models of shared human interactions and experiences. For example, if I prompt Midjourney to generate an image of a poodle puppy having zoomies, it needs to be able to understand the context of that request. Seems like it did a good job with that request. Phenomenological insights are used to take into account the social and emotional dimensions of human communication. These models improve the performance of AI systems in tasks such as customer service chatbots. The use of phenomenology in AI is a promising area of research. As AI systems become more sophisticated, they will need to be able to understand and interact with the world in a more human-like way. Phenomenology can provide AI researchers with the insights they need to develop these next-generation AI systems. By focusing on the lived experience, phenomenology can help us, and our AI systems, to understand the way that we experience the world, and the way that we make sense of it. If you are interested in learning more about phenomenology beyond this brief introduction, I recommend the following books, The Essential Husserl by Don Welton, Being in Time by Martin Heidegger, and The Phenomenology of Perception by Maurice Merleau-Ponty. All of these books are available on Amazon. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video and feel free to comment to let us know your thoughts on it.